All right, welcome to my Streamlabs tutorial. One of the first things you need to do with your Android uh, device is you wanna make sure you're logged in with YouTube. Now, once you're uh, logged in with your YouTube or Google account there, uh, you'll go ahead and boot up your Streamlabs. And this is the, the first screen you get uh, once you uh, get it installed and all that stuff. So go ahead and click on Login with YouTube. And it'll give you, select the account that you wanna use. Go ahead and select that. Slide down, this is just a permission screen saying that you're gonna allow this software and website to be able to access your YouTube account and be able to manage it. You need to have those permissions set up. Uh, we'll do that in order to be able to stream to it. Now, next up is this is a widget screen. Now, if you're doing advanced kind of stuff with uh, streaming and all that stuff, uh, you'll wanna mess with this. But if you're just simple, uh, you're just trying to stream to YouTube, you're trying to archive footage, you're, you're not doing anything too big, go ahead and knock these off. I mean, this is not important if you're an activist or anything like that. If you're someone like me who does a lot of uh, technical stuff, it's very handy. Now, you're going to be greeted to this screen here. This is where majority of the time you're going to be spinning yourselves. In the upper right-hand corner, there's some options this, um, to adjust with the camera, camera settings and stuff like that, and what you're going to be capturing. In the bottom right, that red circle, that is your push the button to start streaming. And then on the left hand side is the little bars here and this brings up a bunch of other menus which are a little bit more important stream just brings you back into this editor is for dealing with widgets but we're not going to be messing with widgets um, this deals with alert profiles and i'll explain those a little bit later and then lastly settings this is the important part where you're going to need to go to first off when you get to this streaming platform you're going to want to double check and make sure it's set up to youtube or if you're more advanced, you can set it up to goes to a RTMP uh, URL and a stream key if you want to do that kind of setup. But with this, if uh, for the advanced features and stuff like that, you only need to have it on YouTube. If you're doing something like uh, using a restream IO to stream to multiple platforms, you'd use that. Or if you're trying to stream to maybe Facebook, you'd use that. Okay, now that we got that set, you can ignore pick ingest server. That is for dealing with Twitch only streaming. Next up, you want to look at your broadcast. Now, by default, it's going to be at 30 frames per second, 720, or at least with my device, and the bit rate was a little bit higher. It was like 3750 on the KBPS. Now, with this, if you're going to be streaming from Wi-Fi, this is perfect. If you're like at a library, public airport, this is good for streaming-wise. But if you're going to be streaming from your cell phone data plan and you got limited bandwidth, I recommend for general just wandering about streaming, you're out in the open, change this to 480, 200, uh, 24 frames per second, and drop this down to about 1000 kbps. I tested this out for a half hour, it was about 256 megabytes used, so you're looking at about 250 to 60 megabytes for each hour. And so that 500, that half a gig right there, that's pretty good. So if you've got a two gig plan for data bandwidth, that's four hours. That's excellent. If you got, I mean, a four gig plan or something higher, that's several more hours. That gets you a lot of stream time in one month. Um, and then if you're going to be going into a building where there's uh, not that strong of a, uh, a cell phone connection, there's no Wi-Fi or something like that, and you still want to be able to stream that footage or at least audio out, drop it down to what's known as potato settings. You drop down your resolution, drop down your frame rate. And then you drop down your bit rate down to here. There you go. This will at least get your audio out. Um, and probably you'll have a little bit janky. This is if you're really hitting uh, the outer limits of uh, what your cell phone's able to pick up for a signal. I'm going to go ahead and kick this back up because I'm going to be using this to do a little bit more uh, streaming and demonstrations here in a little bit. And I want to be able to have better quality. Now... Uh, lower down here is a stream indicator. Sometimes you might want to have that on, sometimes you might not. This just uh, puts on an indicator when you start streaming saying, hey, this uh, this is your connection with your stream server. Is it a little bit bad? Is it good? Uh, so that takes care of that issue. Next up, audio. If you have some sort of external mic besides the ones that are built into your phone, you will be able to select those from here so if you got like um, a Bluetooth device that's uh, blue, uh, hooked up like an earpiece or something like that, you might be able to hook this up depending on if it's able to detect it. 
And these other settings aren't really too much importance uh, if you're just general doing general streaming. And then further down is logout. Let's say you end up logging in with the wrong account and you do a test stream and you're like, oh, I'm not streaming in the right place. You can log out down here and restart the entire process. Now, back to, whoops, um, we'll just go ahead and hit that. Uh, back to the main screen here. Now, uh, some fun little features uh, with the upper right hand corner. You can change the camera by hitting those three dots and hitting that, or you can double tap your screen. It'll automatically flip it back around. The one next to the bell, that's actually a screen capture. I'll go over that a little bit later um, on in this video. And then when it comes to streaming, you get several options here, and I'm not gonna activate these because I'm already uh, doing a screen capture. The two softwares don't like, uh, like each other. But persistent, you hit that one, you'll start streaming straight to YouTube right away. It picks up whatever default stuff that you have in your uh, live streaming, and that's good to go. Now, let's say you get disconnected, something happens, maybe you lose cell signal, battery dies on the cell phone, you get charged, and you wanna continue streaming to that same event, and you didn't end the session when you uh, hit the exit. You can hit active events, and you might uh, most likely will be able to start back streaming on that same event. Now. If let's say you set up a pre-existing event that uh, so people know you're going to be out filming at a certain time or date or event uh, schedule. Well, what you can do is hit upcoming event here and it will pull up a listing of already pre-designated events that you've already set up. And so you'll be able to pick from that. And then lastly, you have a create event, which is be able to create a live stream event. And that just creates a custom one where you can uh, be able to modify everything really easy. And it's just specifically for that individual live stream not like with a persistent where it's uh, always default anyway next up I'm gonna cover uh, the screen capturing and all that uh, other advanced fun features and demonstrate it actually working in its uh, more advanced features all right so now to demonstrate the Streamlabs uh, capability right now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record or the uh, the red button in the bottom right hand corner of my uh, uh, cell phone here and hit persistent stream and within about 30 seconds to 60 seconds we should see it show up on the live stream here and there we go we are now seeing what the cell phone sees through uh, through its camera and uh, you can see it's going and all that stuff and now it's going to do the uh, infinite mirror effect but anyway let's go ahead and uh show off a few extra features here first off let's go ahead and actually i'm going to go ahead and switch this to screen capture now it'll take a second to show up on the other screen uh well on my desktop recording here but uh there we go we have screen capture going on where you can see the screen that I have on my cell phone. Now you have to be careful with this because it will capture your password input if you lock your screen. If you, so you do not want to have this streaming if you end up, uh, let's say you uh, close the screen and it goes automatically to password. When you, as soon as you open the screen back up and you type in your password or you do the little motion to unlock your phone, that stream is gonna get, well, that's gonna get sent out to the live stream wherever it's going to. If it's on YouTube, it'll be on YouTube. If there's a bunch of people watching, they're gonna know your password. So be careful with that. This is a very powerful but dangerous tool right here. But uh, this allows me to show you some fun little things here. Edit stream info. So currently, this is what I have for the actual stream. As you can see here, I can adjust, whoops. Well, uh, fix that again. But you, I can enter a description, I can enter the title and change that, and it'll affect uh, what happens on the stream. So you can adjust on the fly with that. So now that's a nice little fun thing with that. Um, this is a notification thing. This is for more advanced features. Let's say you have uh, the widgets and all that stuff going and you wanna prevent them from making noise or whatever. Just hit the mute, and then that allows you to pause any of all the alerts that will be popping up during that time frame. 
Anyway, so we'll go ahead and close that by just sliding the screen back to the right. And let's go ahead and we're going to stop this, except we're not going to end the session. We're just going to hit. Oh, wait, no, I guess I have to end the session. This is a live one. So we're going to end the session here. And now what I'm going to do is, oops, not lock. Um, hit the bottom right hand corner again once more. And now I am going to go to the bottom and create an event. And so now I have a new event up and going. And in order to show this, I'm going to go ahead and go to my events tab. And as you can see, now I have a new event currently uh, ready to go. I'm going to hit the live control room. So this way you can see what's going on. It's already streaming. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, is this public? Probably public. Okay, so I'm mute that. So as you can see, we got this going on. Now, um, with this, we can edit stream info. Right now, it is an unlisted state. And I can change the name of the stream. Let's call this demo2. Next. Um, that's a standard thing. It always Streamlabs will always put that in for the description. You can close that out if you want or whatnot. I'm just going to hit test. Well, add test in here. I'm going to hit done. And I'm going to go ahead, hit save. And as you can see, there we go. That is saved. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is in the live control thing, I'm going to hit info and settings. And there we go. It now has changed to demo two and all uh, all that fun stuff there there is a very limited amount of what you can do with this but anyway i'm going to go ahead and go back to the live control room and demonstrate the uh continuation okay so we're back to streaming here i'm going to go ahead and hit the stop Come on. Okay, there we go. And what will happen is you'll see this screen here. You can either keep the event active or you can finish it, which closes out the event and just turns it into a video. I'm going to go ahead and hit the keep active. Now, unfortunately, I can't really show this part without doing all kinds of uh, weird editing that's going to take way too much time. I'm going to just tell you what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button once more in the bottom right hand corner and hit active event. And what will happen is now it'll start trying to stream to back to demo two because it found demo two. And as you can see, now it's streaming live. It says, oh, it, it's still going on in the bottom corner here. So there we go. And so that's uh, if you have with the um, if you do the create event and let's say you have a disconnect or whatever, you're able to continue uh, continue streaming to that thing. And then once you're all done, of course, hit finish the event. There you good to go. And let's go ahead and take a look at my video manager here. And as you can see, there is demo two being processed. There is Streamlabs, the first demo that I just demonstrated right there. This will take a little bit to process, but let's go ahead and go back to live streaming tab here. And keep in mind, when you're doing all this kinds of a setup, you're gonna need to make sure that um, beforehand, yeah, let's say you want to make sure your stream is monetized. Go ahead and have this setting taken care of. Hit the advanced setting. Go through uh, the advanced settings and get that all uh, all checked out and all that stuff. So this way you don't have to worry really worry too much about that. You can throw in the cards and stuff like that that you need to do for uh, having available within the live stream. But that pretty much rounds up this explanation. Next up is we're going to talk about how to stream to multiple locations as you can see at the top of my tabs here i have more than uh plenty of areas that i'm going to be streaming to 
for a demonstration. All right. Now, let's say you want to stream to more than just YouTube. You, you want to have sort of backup options in place. Well, there is the capability of doing that with uh, re well with Streamlabs here. And that is using also combined with this uh, website known as Restream.io. Now, the trick is currently out of the listings that I'm messing with here, um, with Periscope, Twitch, and YouTube, YouTube is the only one that allows you to stream a private stream or an unlisted stream. The rest of these, if you stream to them, it's public no matter what. So you have to keep this in mind and you may have to like log into this site uh, while you're out in the field. And let's say you have something where you don't need to be uh, going out to the public right away. You will need to go through and make sure you shut down the ones you don't want them on. Now, moving on here, um, when it comes to setting this up, now if you remember what I talked about with Restream, uh, well, on Streamlabs here, there was a specific spot in the settings where you uh, select a streaming platform. Now, as you can see on my mobile screen here, there is, I have filled out the custom RTMP server information. Now, when I do uh, restream, I have to make sure I put this thing right here uh, that I highlighted in exactly like that is. If there's anything wrong with it, it will screw it up. It will not transmit properly. Next up is the stream key. This is very important. You have to make sure you fill this out accurately too. And you probably will want to do a test stream before you even uh, head out to the field to make sure it's streaming properly. Now, with Restream.io, uh, depending on your web browser, if you got the Flash installed, uh, it will have a little preview window right here for when you start streaming. And if you need to, let's say you accidentally revealed your stream key, I forgot to mention this, you can hit this button right here to generate a new key. And for those of you that want to try to hijack this later on in the future, I'm going to be regenerating this key. So this key that you see right now will not be valid uh, when this goes out as this video. But nonetheless, the nice thing about this is it's free. There's a few catches to it. Like, let's say you want to try to stream to Facebook. That's a paid feature. You require to um, do a paid feature in order to do that because I think it's also similar to where you have to stream to a custom RTMP server. But let's go ahead and go through this. Um, as you can see, they got several different methods, well, locations to stream to. YouTube has three different spots right here. Um, but on the free account, you can only use one of these at a time. You have Stream Now, which is sort of like uh, go straight to your live stream dashboard. This doesn't require anything specific. It just puts it right out there. Um, so whatever your live streams settings, this would be perfect. If you're a simple person, that would be perfect. Um, YouTube events is essentially just like setting up a live event and then streaming to it. It'll give you a custom key to stream to that one specific event. Or like within uh, Streamlabs, it would uh, give you a capability of selecting it when you uh, hit the right settings on that. But as you can see, there's very, there's quite a few uh, different uh, streaming services that you can stream to here. And then here's the custom platform RTMP thing. That is actually gonna cost you money right there, 15 bucks a month. So, or, or you get a pro account. Well, and if you get a pro account, you're able to do more than one YouTube channel. But currently what I have set up right now is just Twitch, Periscope, and Use, um, YouTube stream now live. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put it back on here and we're gonna go ahead and do a demonstration of just streaming this uh, live here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stream and within about a minute and a half, oh, well, what do you know? We're already picking up something right now. So let's go ahead and see us do the infinite uh, window stream here. It might take a second here. Uh, well, the thing is, though, when you uh, put in something like uh, Restream.io in the middle of uh, intercepting your stream to split it up. Uh, here we go. As you can see, we got it going. It will add more delay to it, usually. It may add an extra 30 seconds to a full minute, it just depending on how busy the servers are, how much traffic it got going on. But here is uh, YouTube. 
and then here is Twitch. Uh, we'll come back to that as soon as the ad finish run uh, running. But uh, let's see here. Um, trying to channels. I need to. Oh uh, well, I'll fix this problem real fast. It should. Ah, here we go. Periscope is live. And I'm going to mute this so I don't annoy the hell out of myself. But yeah, you can see here it is on Twitch. And, well, I mean, not Twitch. This is Periscope. Uh, within, I would probably... Can I view my channel here? Uh, view profile. Hit the X on this. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Bam. Bam. Er, there we go. This is the live event. That was me testing now. But here we go. And mute this from so I don't know myself. And then here is Twitch. Here it is streaming IRL. Pretty good uh, kind of thing set up. And with the uh, fun part with Twitch here, if you go to, whoops, ch not channel. Uh, no, I hit the wrong one. I'm supposed to be going to the dashboard. Um, Let's see here. Stream summary. What was it? Settings. Ah, here it is. You can have Twitch store your video and then upload it to YouTube if need be. There's uh, some extra settings unless they change that all up. And it will only store for 14 days on a free account. So just keep that in mind. But um, and then here you can see it also right here in the video preview you can set up all this stuff to make sure you got it going but when you go back and look at this as you can see it's indicating it's pretty much streaming everywhere and it's acting a little bit buggy for me I, and also it'll let you know if you're like streaming too powerful for uh, a, a specific um, uh, receiving server like periscope here it's not really meant to handle the amount of data that i'm sending to it it's actually too high of a bit rate but as you can see it's not really being too much of an issue with it at the moment. Or I guess it is because it's sort of freezing. But uh, you can adjust your uh, stream settings for all that. Uh, just keep in mind, let's see here, uh, that you will not be able to adjust anything on the fly with this. You would have to literally have um, a web browser on your phone to access all of this stuff and be able to do it or an app for each one of these to adjust them while you're in the middle of doing it. So that is a good demonstration of Restream IO. Now next up, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the Streamlab features that you can add in and improve your stream or add flavor to it. As I said, these are all advanced features. If you're a very non-technical person, I would not recommend trying to dive into this until you, you, you learn all the ins of outs for just, the, I mean, the YouTube platform, and then you study a little bit of these other platforms that are going on. All right, let's go ahead and look at the widgets feature of Streamlabs, which will allow you to put in some interesting features into your live stream that other people will be able to see. And essentially what it is, is putting overlays into your live stream that will be able to interact or have some sort of feature going on with the audience. Now we're going to go ahead and hit this little button here to activate some widgets. And I'm going to go ahead and activate the, the settings that I use here. And so what I got going on is I have a chat box, event list, alert box, and a donation ticker. I'm going to go ahead. There's plenty of other features, but I'll leave that up to those that want to do it to explore and see those uh, kinds of things. Now, as you can see here, this is what I got for the little uh, setup here. I have a chat box, event, well, donation ticker, the event list that's underneath all this crap, which isn't hard. It's pretty little bit difficult to hit. And then this is the alert box. Now, the chat box will essentially put whatever is typed into the chat of your YouTube or Twitch and put it in there. If you're trying, if you're using the restream and streaming to like Periscope or some other service, those features are not sponsored by, um, by specifically by uh, uh, Streamlabs here. 
So unfortunately, those people that want to chat in those areas will not be able to interact with you uh, if you're using the RTMP restream kind of system on that. Uh, the event list essentially is just w uh, stuff that's happened in the past. People that subscribed and stuff like that to you may get, end up get put in there. People that do super chats, uh, donations, uh, that kind of stuff will end up in the event listing. And I'll show you exactly how you can customize that and do more stuff with that a little bit later. Donation tracker that I put at the top essentially is just a little band uh, that goes across the top of people that have donated in the recent uh, stream. And then the alert box at the bottom is essentially notifications like someone subscribes to you, follows you, makes a donation, a super chat. Those things can end up in the alert box area. And so now I'm going to go ahead and pull off of this, uh, my little uh, screen recorder here. And we're going to go into an actual demonstration of how all these things works and how you can get this all set up. All right. So... Let's go ahead and uh, get logged into Streamlabs here. And this is what the website looks like uh, when you uh, lo first load it up. And when you hit the go to login, uh, which apparently I'm already logged in here. Uh, let's uh, go back here and demonstrate the actual login. Anyway, hit the login and you're gonna be given the choice of logging in with your Twitch, YouTube, Facebook account, or a Mixer account. And the thing is, we're doing this for YouTube, so we're gonna go ahead and click on do this with YouTube. And if you're gonna deal with anything with Twitch side of things, you're gonna log in on the Twitch. You can, um, you can merge the accounts, but it doesn't allow you to adjust the settings with uh, just one account. So that's the uh, one sort of problematic thing with that. But nonetheless, it's a pretty powerful tool. And so as you can see here, um, this is our little graph thing. It gives a little, all kinds of little information and stuff like that. And so let's go ahead and look at the alert boxes. The alert boxes will go hand in hand with a lot of the other things with the, uh, with the little uh, notification on the side and all that. So let's go ahead and uh, here's our little area and as you can see when you go to the specific areas we're able to create little gifts and icons and information for when someone makes a donation or does a subscriber or well sponsors is not available to uh, people unless they're big gaming thing or something like that and, and this is for super chats right here um, I don't have an actual image for that one but nonetheless let's go ahead and we're going to do a test donation and test subscriber and check this out. And there you have it. You see the little box over here, the uh, it's prior history box there, notification box. It will uh, put up information and store that. And there was a thing, here's the ticker, donation ticker across the top. And you hear that sound effect. So let's go ahead and do another test here with uh, test super chat. And There you go. And the donation ticker is still continually going. That goes for a while. Um, you, uh, you can adjust the settings and all that stuff. But you have to keep in mind when you're doing this that the settings for default font and all that stuff is not that great. Um, who is it? Uh, let's go back to the donations tab here. And oh yeah, here it is. Don, uh, font settings. 
I had to reduce them because they're pretty high uh, large. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, log out and log into the Twitch one. The Twitch one I haven't done much with. So we're going to go ahead and go back and get started. We're going to log in with Twitch. And go down to the alert box. And I'll show you. Uh, let's do test follow here. Let's we'll load up. Whoops. Didn't mean to hit that. But that will show on the actual thing here in a sec. But as you can see, it's 64p, it's 800. So we're going to go ahead and hit toss, test follow again. And we're going to go back over to here. Now, as you can see, it's really, really big. And so you'd have to size that down to appropriate size. It requires a little bit of work when you go ahead and set this up and I'm in the wrong tab again. But as I said, you, you're able to do all kinds of little things. They got already pre-done stuff that if you want to just use the defaults that they give you, you can add your own files to do that stuff. And also, they have their own whoops they have their own sound files too right here so and you can change the how loud they're going to be during the stream if you think they're going to be too loud you can crank it down i like four and six percent sound side um sound there and you make sure you hit the save settings at the bottom when you go ahead and do that but i'm going to go ahead and bring us back over to the YouTube one because that is my primary account. I'm going to show you how you can do the merging of the two accounts. All right, and underneath the account settings, uh, when you you pick the one that want to be your primary account, and then what you do is you'll hit the you'll have like a merge thing here and you hit that and it'll look for you already being logged in with uh, with your like your Twitch account like what I'm over here and go okay we'll merge it these two accounts are now working together so this way your chat box is actually working together and so let's do a demonstration of that let's go ahead and I'm gonna test out to live chat right here bam and you'll see as it uh, pops up on here, it'll be on the right hand side. I mean, a left hand side here. That is actually the one that's displayed on the phone itself. And whoops, there it is right at the very bottom. There's the little chat box right there. I'll probably need to make some further adjustments on the chat box size. But generally, you want to have your chat off to the side where there's not going to be much going on uh, away from where your main focus is at. Now, let's go ahead and test this at what it looks like when Twitch does it. And as again, you'll see it pop up as uh, something for, well, on my screen in red or blue or something like that, indicating. Uh, there's the uh, Twitch notification right there. Okay, never mind. The Twitch one doesn't show up um, on the detected scale there. So I must have misremembered that part. But nonetheless, the Twitch chat and all that stuff will be recorded and overlaid on your actual stream. Um, so this way people can see if you're chalking back and forth with someone, uh, you don't have to worry, it'll be happening or whatever. And so if need be, you could actually be tabbing between the two things because you can actually load up and I'm going to show off the tabbing about I'm screen recording exactly what I got as you see it's still screen recording so you could easily look at your twitch chat if you wanted to uh, or even uh, periscope chat or something like that 
using this, uh, just being able to tab out to the other, or flip the uh, apps around there. Now, another thing is you can set up a donation settings here. Um, I won't go too much into this, but you can uh, have it where people can do custom messages. They can uh, put out music and stuff like that. Uh, you can set out the minimum number. And uh, underneath the methods, there's PayPal, credit card donations, and there's like two other systems that they have in there. And uh, when you have that link, it'll be something like this. And when someone wants to donate, here you go. You can see all this stuff here. They can type their message, donate amount, and there'll be other options if you have those options available. Now keep in mind, got to be careful because if you have them being able to play noise or some sort of song or something like that, it could impact and play over, well, it will play from your cell phone. And so the last thing you need is someone to play a really nasty uh, sound clip and stuff like that. So my general settings with that is have that turned off. And then let's go ahead and look at the chat box. Um, as is, these are a bunch of settings here. This is a preview window. You can adjust how long the messages uh, stay up, the font size, you can have it always turned on and stuff like that. And there's even further customization here. Just remember to save your settings after you finish doing this. And as you can see, Streamlabs is a very powerful streaming application, but it can also both be very simple and very useful when combined with Restream to stream to multiple things if you need or feel the need that you uh, have to have that going on. Especially if you're worried about uh, needing like multiple copies, in which case Twitch with their way of store, uh, storing things for 14 days uh, would be very handy because that gives you enough time to get home and uh, download it. Well, do a little bit of magicry with that to download all that. So I hope this has been fairly, fairly helpful on getting all this figured out. And keep in mind this, um, this is a learning process. It took me a little bit to get all this stuff a little bit down pat enough to be able to explain this all to you. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here to add. And a lot of the advanced features as you explore, they're always adding more stuff in too. But nonetheless, I will go ahead and end it there. And if you have any further questions, go ahead and leave them in the description. Oh, well, in the comment section, I might be able to answer them. I might not be able to. Who knows, maybe someone else will be able to do uh, answer them for you.